So Jason, what's up with the Fez? You know, that question keeps coming up online, and I've been following Tiki stuff online for probably starting 15 to 20 years ago, but, but more seriously, the last five or six years at least. And every, at least every month or two, you see, you see a question, what's with the Fez? How is the Fez Tiki? Because, you know, you, you've seen as many times as I have the, the people that want to tell you, well, this is Tiki, or that's not Tiki. I like how you said that. That's cool, Hauser. Well, that's not tiki. <laughs> I woke up in a tiki mood. <laughs> to start off, I think this is what we got to say, and we, we've talked about this mm-hmm. on an earlier episode. The idea about things being tiki adjacent. Yeah, the idea that it may not be tiki canon, but it plays really nice with tiki. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, first off, right off the bat, is a fez tiki? No. Not directly. But it is definitely connected. Mm-hmm. So, I have my theories, and you have your theories. Yes, indeed. So, let's hear yours first. So, really, the resurgence of Tiki, I think, came out of of people that enjoyed the nostalgia and and the whimsy of mid-century Americana. Mm -hmm. The idea of an idealized American 1950s and 1960s, you know, post-World War II, Economy's doing great for many people. Yeah. You got more people being educated. You got more people that have the income to go out and do things, to take trips, to see the world, or just to go out to a good dinner show. Yeah, I know. Like, I mean, things were so much better back then. People were wearing fezes all the time. <laughs> yeah, you know, the strange thing is there, there are plenty of stories you can find online about hats not being allowed inside of nicer dining places, which most of the tiki places that oh, really? we know of now were inside. So, you know, staff might wear hats as part of their uniform, but generally speaking, there are even stories of uh, a group of Shriners being disallowed from going into a Trader Vic's because they wouldn't take off their their fezes. Well, I think that's one thing that's always kind of interesting, like when it comes to to the old tiki palaces and the old tiki restaurants back then. People dressed up to go out. They were dressed for fine dining. They were wearing tuxedos. They were wearing suits. If you saw Aloha shirts, they were on the staff. Exactly, because, yeah, 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 exactly. The only people wearing a lot of shirts was the staff. And I don't even know when that changed. But but the idea is that people dressed up to go out to dinner. So you were saying something to the effect of, like, Shag has an influence in all this. Yeah, yeah, as, uh, as Shag was coming up, because he came up with the resurgence or current, the wave we're either at, we're, depending on who you, who you talk to, what you read, you know, whether we're in the third wave or fourth wave now, but the idea that that when Tiki came back around in the 90s with uh, with the Tiki Times yep. and, and the crowd in, in Southern and Northern California fueling that resurgence, all the names that everybody already knows, yep. well, Shag was an artist that was influenced by that and a part of it, and he created covers for Tiki Times. Oh, yeah. But his early artwork, you can see that he was fascinated with the, the esoteric uh, fraternal organizations. And his artwork, which became iconic in that community, often featured fezes. Yep. So that was an easy tie-in of, you know, mid-century idealized nostalgia. Yeah, and well, when you think about it, like when it comes to like what can a guy wear? Like right. If you're, a, if you're a woman in the tiki scene, you can wear like those like a flower, a mm-hmm. hair piece or whatever. But if you're a guy, it's sort of like outside of like that, that crazy yeah. ass hat. What else is there to wear? <laughs> the uh, the beachcomber or the Panama style, or yeah, there there are there are a few different sun hats that a guy might wear, or something that's got more of a more of a natural sort of a, a bamboo or frond kind of feel to it. Yep. But you know, when you look at the the fez, it doesn't seem like very practical headgear. It's <laughs> for us there. There's symbolism to it, but I don't think that anybody wearing it in a tiki bar now thinks of that symbolism. Well, speaking of it's, symbols, what is the symbol that's on your head on this? Bar? Oh, this one is my uh, my devil's reef. So that's the. The icon for the the Devil's Reef can can uh, originally designed, I believe, by the Fezmonger himself. We had Jason Rogers. Yes, uh, for uh, for Jason and Robin Alexander and their Devil's Reef. No, oh, that, that is the symbol. Yeah. Yes, yes, but uh, so if you go into the Fez, it dates back to uh, Northern Africa Islamic mysticism and the fraternal organizations of the the early twentieth century through the mid twentieth century 
usually dealt with either Middle Eastern or Eastern mysticism as their source of symbology. It was exotic. It was adventurous. Yep. And much as the, the original Fezes conveyed a, a rank or an experience level, so did it in the, uh, well, the Shriners is the one that we know best. But yeah. there were, once the Shriners were a big deal, there were many other organizations that came up that imitated that. So, you know, much like, uh, much like Tiki itself, there's, there's a whole lot of imitation and seeing what works. No, wait, so like the bigger you are, the bigger your, your uh, Fez was? Uh, there was a, a difference in, in color and size of the tassel. And I hope I get to wear a Fez that big someday. <laughs> There was a difference in the uh, in the, the the size of the tassel, the color of the tassel, oh, really? the color of the hat. I, I don't know all the information offhand. I've, also, was I'll look it up at different times, but yes. Damn, we'll put on the bigger one. So, <laughs> so this, this would be the uh, the taller version with the uh, the Devil's Reef Devil Ray. Oh wow! Right Look there. That. Now that's a bigger one. Yeah, that is a that is much taller and definitely feels different. Um, so the symbolism on the the original fezes. There was a, a, a circular knowledge thing going on there. There was the, the womb of the universe concept. The, uh, the tassel was supposed to be like an umbilical cord. Just, it's kind of lost on us now, I think. Yeah. It's, it's a neat idea. Uh, originally, the fezes that came out of northern Africa, you never secured the tassel because it was supposed to be the 360 degrees of knowledge. Oh, so it was supposed no. to be free-flowing at all times. But if you've ever worn a fez out in public, you realize that the, 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 free, the, the free-flowing tassel kind of gets annoying after a while. It's in your eye, it's in your ear, wherever. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, what I, from, from the research that I've done in the mid-century and up until the mid-century, there was always a fascination, well, talking about America. Yes. With the fascination of the exotic. Yeah, and of course that, that goes back to Europe as well. Yeah, and then the three main things or areas that were considered exotic mm -hmm. were Polynesia. Yes. The Orient and what the what they're calling Morocco. Right. And the reason and the reasons why the Shriners and all them they adopted all that Moroccan imagery was because it was considered exotic. Right. I think what happened in the 90s, when there was not only the Tiki revival, mm -hmm. but when there was a revival in like retro culture right. o overall. And I remember, you know, I remember like the whole swing dancing thing and, right. and all that other well, thing. Rockabilly first. And Rockabilly. And, yep, and, and every, swing. Yep. And, uh, and surf. Surf yes. bands. There were a lot of surf bands. And um, along with that came the fashion. And I think, I think a lot of that was, was driven by... The, the younger people coming up, the people that were in their teens, 20s, even early 30s, going through the 90s, yeah. that they were going to the, the resale shops and the thrift stores, and they were finding what two generations back yep. had been dumping. You know, as their kids were cleaning out their houses and apartments, they came across these things, and it may have been a, a, a treasured fez that, that signified rank in, a, in an order, yep. but it doesn't mean anything, you know, two generations down the line. Oh, completely right. You're you're completely right, Jason. Because like, say you get into vintage clothing, mm -hmm. right? And so, and exactly what you said. Say you're like, okay, now I got to go to vintage stores. So now, say you're a guy and you're looking for like vintage suits or vintage ties or whatever, and all of a sudden you see this old this old Shriners fez sitting there. Well, that's part of the same time, right? And you're kind of like, all right, well, that sort of fits. And it's the same thing when it comes to tiki. I what I love about tiki is the connection to the mid century. Yes, because yeah, that's when it was the biggest, and it. I think it goes hand in hand with the the bringing back of the retro culture. And part of that, when you're talking about clothing, you have the fez. Hey gang, we'll get back to the tiki conversation here in just a second. But I want to let y'all know they have T-shirts for sale. They are screen printed in America. The artist is Tony Canepa, and uh, they're going for $20 a piece, $25 including shipping. If you're interested in buying one, go to my website, tikiwithray.com, and then there's a tab that says buy a t-shirt. Click on there and just follow the prompts. So uh, thank you very much. And let's get back to the uh, tiki conversation now. Are you going to throw another one on? Um, the Fez? What's this one about? Uh, this was actually the first Fez I ever purchased. All of my Fezes are from Fezorama. I, I'm not comfortable with the idea of wearing a Shriner Fez. No. Because I, I have my own experience in the military and 
as a kid in Boy Scouts, the idea that 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 uniforms that convey something about your rank and your experience are not something to be to be toyed with. No, I completely agree. I mean, like any. I mean, I'm not judging anything, and I'm not saying whether or not to wear a Shriner vest, but mm. I feel exactly the same way. I mean, it's like someone earned that, right? Somebody, somebody's great, somebody's grandparents or great grandparent wore that as a as a badge of honor. Yep, and they they had to earn it to wear it. Yeah, and I don't think you you just indiscriminately wearing it. And, it, it kind of takes this takes a lack of respect so, away. Yeah, from when it. I when I wanted something that was for fun to go out to the tiki bar, what uh, a friend of mine once referred to as, oh, a drinking hat. <laughs> a drinking hat. Well, it's it's got no brim. It doesn't keep the sun away. It doesn't keep the glare away. It's incredibly warm to wear. It's it's decorative. Yeah, I don't. I think it's cool if you like collect fezzes. Hmm. You know, like if you have a collection of Shriner fezzes, I think that's fine. Yeah, if I if I came across one that I was particularly impressed with. I'd love to have one to display in my home, but I'd feel very odd wearing it out and about. Is the Fezmonger, is he the only person really making Fezes now? I have seen a few others online, but they're, most of them are much more, what do you call it, not, not costumey, but more, more cosmetic, not as practical. Uh, he's, as far as I know, he's the only one that's making practical, yeah. artistic, durable Good looking fez. Like a fez that you could legitimately wear. Okay. And actually, Jason, every time I go to the Devil's Reef, Jason Alexander is wearing yes. one of those fezes. I have to tell you, the first time I almost bought a fez was uh, very early 2000s when I discovered Modern Drunkard magazine online. Okay. Because I almost got the, the Modern Drunkard logo fez, which is a really cheap cup style felt fez. Yeah. No, I think, I think a lot of the fez connection with Tiki is it's the mid century connection yes. more than anything. And. It's not tiki. I don't think it has nothing to do with tiki, but I definitely think it's definitely something that's tiki adjacent. But it's it's getting into that space of escapism. Yep. That that finding that something that brings you joy and takes you out of the here and now. Yep. And I think you can. I mean, obviously, the tiki and the fez has been combined. I mean, like look at these these tiki mugs that you have. I yes. Mean, like like look at this guy. What's the story with this dude? Uh, that guy uh, came through the uh, Monk Tiki Imports brand. Oh, wow. Look at so he has a fez on. And, and, and he's he yeah, he only Moai. And if you look across the back, it says, never forget to get drunk. Never forget to get drunk. Which, uh, if, if you grew up watching cartoons in the in the 70s and into the early 80s, you, you'd see that when a character got drunk, for some reason they would see flying elephants going around their head. So that does, that was kind of a callback to that. Yeah, what's, what's the story with uh, that guy? And right then there? this guy is a tiki farm, and I, I have a thing for the fugu, the, uh, the puffer fish, but what could be better... Then a puffer fish would be a puffer fish wearing a fez. <laughs> now, if our, if our friend Stephen Curran was here, he would tell you nothing is classier than a monkey with a fez. Yeah. And lowbrow art, which also big surgeons at the same time in the 90s, yep. along with custom culture, big on the monkey with a fez. Yep. The more, the more I think about Tiki and the more I think about the Tiki revival, I think there was definitely a rewriting of what some of the quote-unquote rules were. Yes. Of like what tiki is and what what it isn't and like what can be included with it, and I really honestly think it all comes back to a mid century revival hmm. and just bringing everything back into that. Yeah, I think I think much like the rest of tiki, there isn't one single answer. There are a whole bunch of things that contributed to it, yeah. and over time, things that work just work. Yeah, yeah. Like even like another thing too. I'm seeing like like Atomic Age. Yes. I, I see a lot of situations like like people that have home tiki bars where like they're not just into tiki, they're into this, they're into the atomic age, they're into that, and obviously their homes or their bars is gonna be a mishmash, right? Of all these different things. There's usually a almost a, a time capsule feel. Yeah, but it's the whole idea of escapism and being transported. Yeah, and, and, and in some ways back to another time. Right, because even if you're even if you're doing well, how many times a year do you get to go on vacation? Once, maybe twice. If you're not retired and yeah. not independently wealthy, but if you got that space set aside in your home, mm-hmm. or you got that local bar that takes you away someplace different, yep, that's where you go. Yeah, and if you're gonna go, we're a fez. Thanks for showing off your your fez collection here. Yeah, it's a uh, it, it's growing. I'm sure there will be more. 
eventually. Just like your tiki mug collection, you know, <laughs> you just can't stop. It happens. Yeah, so uh, we, uh, we we chose this area of my of my apartment today because we wanted to find some other things that were a little a little tiki adjacent rather than just the, the more classic tiki. Yeah. It's all about things that play well together. In fact, if you look right behind you there, Ray, you'll see a uh, Fred and Barney Rubble from, oh, yeah. from Geeky Tiki's. And if you remember the loyal order of uh, yeah. Water Buffalo, yeah. that was their fraternal organization. <laughs> yeah, it all comes down to the hats. Yes. So, and if you're interested in buying and getting your own Fez, the only person or company I would recommend is Fez Fez Rama. So, uh, Jason, you better like this video. Hey gang, this is Tiki with Ray, and I just want to say thank you very much for checking out my video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more episodes, click on the subscribe button. And if you like the video, give it a like. That would mean a lot to me. And if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave a comment in the, uh, the comment section below.